Have you ever wondered about the different levels of autonomous driving? Level 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Everyone is talking about it, but what are those really? And what sensors are being used at the vehicle to achieve those levels? Well, here's a short explanation on Autogefühl. And this one here is a Mercedes S-Class. It's a prototype vehicle and basically has three different kinds of sensors. So there's the camera. For example, here's one camera, also the side camera sensors. Then there are the radar sensors, for example, here the middle one, the normal one, and for the prototype, also the sides. And then there are the lasers, and those ones are the big ones mounted at the roof and also at the very lower side. So, and at the moment, we are at level two. But let me just start with level zero. So, level zero would be just nothing you drive on your own. Level one would be if you have one assistant system, for example, you know, like an autonomous emergency brake or uh, adaptive cruise control, which regulates braking and accelerating. Level two, then, would be if you have both systems for braking and accelerating, but also for a side assist. So if, for example, the car is being kept in the lane, but you still have to keep your hands at the steering wheel, steering wheel all the time. And that's where we are at the moment. And, for example, in the Mercedes vehicles, they use camera and the radar both at the same time. But with other manufacturers, they, for example, use only the radar or only the camera system. But for level two, you can have different ways then. If we then think about the level three, that would be also a well, semi-autonomous driving. So in some situations, the car would be driving autonomously and is also then responsible for what's happening. That's the big difference. But there's also the driver still as a backup. So the car would you know, tell you, oh, you know, you know, you have to take over again. I don't really cope with the situation. And then the steering wheel comes out again and you have to take over the situation. That is level three. Then this prototype vehicle would be already level four. And that is intended to have a full autonomous drive, but for certain areas because they maybe have to map some areas so limit it to a special region or limit it for example to a motorway but basically you are not the backup as a driver anymore the car does it all and the level five would be then extended to an autonomous drive where you can do it all all the way and everywhere so without limitation without any regional limit or something so level five would be really where you don't have a steering wheel anymore and everything is done by the vehicle. That's about in short what there are for different levels. So if we in the reviews talk about level two or then level three, level four, you can always go back to this video. Ah, oh, what was it again? Okay, and then scroll back to this video again. Then you have some clarification of the different levels of autonomous driving and also interesting always to see the different sensors in action. Of course, with a real serious production vehicle, they would be a little bit better hidden again. That's what the manufacturers are always working on. And for a little bit more detail, I'm now joined by two experts from the Mercedes Autonomous Driving Team, Bernhard and Manuel. And I want to start with you because please tell me more about the current series production Mercedes S-Class or also the, the other cars. I mean, it's also just down to the compact segment. Which level of autonomous driving do we have there? Why and which sensors are you using? Okay, when we introduced the S-Class in 2013, that was the first car with a level two uh, driving assistance system. And by now, obviously the, the, the updated version of the S-Class has that system as well. And all the way down to the A-Class, even the A-Class, B-Class, the compact cars have that as well. So that means that we have a longitudinal and lateral um, support. So uh, driving to, to, to the front, braking, but also uh, steering support. So in, when those, two things come together then when we talk about a level two driver assistance system. So um, by the three different types of sensors, why would you use already two? Because other manufacturers, for example, just use a camera system or just use a radar system. And what are the pros and cons of each sensor type? So on the level two systems, we use camera and radar mainly. We also use GPS and ultrasonic, but uh, camera and radar are the main sensors that we rely on. We use two different sensor principles to have more redundancy in the car. So let's say in the fog, me as a, as a human being, I have trouble seeing because my visual sensor, my eyes are obscured. Same thing goes for the camera. The radar 
does not really have trouble with uh, with uh, fog. It can still see, and it is really good in detecting um, speed. Um, I can. I think I know how fast an object is going, the radar really knows it because it can measure it. So it's a really powerful sensor, however the camera is really good with semantics, it knows it can recognize a car and distinguish it from a person for example. Um, so there's different things where um, these sensors have their advantages, so just like my eyes can do things my ears cannot, my ears can do things that my eyes cannot do. So also the, the camera is good for, for lane keeping assist, for detecting lines on the road. Of course, yeah, a, a radar cannot really see a line, but the camera can, can see just that exactly, yeah. And then, you know, not for the serious production Mercedes S-Class, but for the future ones, we'll soon come to Manu for that or so, uh, you also have the laser. What would be the pro and con of a laser? Well, a LiDAR scanner, um, it, it can really measure the distance to an object very precisely um, and it can do that very fast and um, if you have a lot of dots, when, we, when those come together we have a really robust sensor that, to de detect um, the distance of an object. Thank you so much and now we jump over to you. So, as far as I understood it, this one should also be level 4. Why are you basically jumping from level 2 to level 4 and you know, what's, what's the basic sense of this project? So the, the reason why we are jumping to level 4 is because of the development time we are anticipating to launch this uh, car with the desired prototype and the desired uh, testing we want to do at the end uh, of this year in San Jose. Um, we think it is much more reasonable to now try to implement the full system and work on it uh, in order to make it the release in time. So um, this car basically, unlike what uh, Bernard said, is uh, aimed to um, uh, reach level 4 uh, automated driving. So the idea behind it is basically that you can get into the car and that you can do whatever you want and the car brings you from A to B. Um, in comparison to level 5, this is still in a restricted area. So think about, uh, there are so many more use cases, for example, like parking. So if you want to park the car, you don't need to do this on your own. You can just leave the car and the car goes somewhere and parks. Uh, for level 5 then, the difference is that, you were, that you're basically expanding um, the area. So you have not any more restricted geofence area, so you can drive everywhere with the car. So would you say for beginning with level 3, you would need all three types of sensors, right? Um, I would say so, yeah. Uh, not, not necessarily. So there is a difference between the use cases that you want to drive on. Um, so most of the time it's also good enough to have a camera and radar. Uh, you don't necessarily need a LiDAR to basically do level 3. But for level 4 you definitely need all three. Yeah, for level 4 um, it also depends a little bit on the use cases, but in, in, in general we would say yes, especially since you want to have the point clouds from the LiDAR, for example, to do much more robust uh, object detection, especially in urban areas, and this is basically the project is aiming about to drive in urban areas. So for a level 3, I mean, we could imagine that works on the motorway, for example, and it would also work without any you know, car-to-car -car communication, car-to-x communication, so you don't need another level of communication. But if we then think about level 4, level 5, so fully autonomous driving, do you think that's only possible when we also have some information from the surrounding, like from the parking lot, maybe sensors in the street, in the city lamps or something? What's your projection on that? Um, I would say it would definitely help if the infrastructure can give you some information, for example, about like traffic jams or, for example, traffic light situations. Uh, so this could really benefit in the safe driving car system. But it's not necessarily necessary to, to do it. So you can drive also without this communication between the infrastructure and the vehicle and vehicle to vehicle. But with all these technologies, if you bring together much more technologies, it can be much more robust. So in situations where maybe it's not very clear what the car should do, um, it can help to make a decision based on the different kind of sensors that you have, but also in addition to the different kind of information that you get from the surroundings. So what can we expect actually as for a time schedule? So when could level 3 or then also the level 4, when could it be reality? When could I maybe buy that S-Class? So we start now with the prototype um, and we drive this in San Jose by um, uh, fall this year so that everyone 
can already from from the development team experience that on a, like a real um, scenario on the streets out there. Uh, we definitely want to also then expand it a little bit over the next couple of years. Um, of course, um, I cannot name now a, a date where we will launch this in the production, but. Um, I think um, and then we will see in the next decade these cars being reality. Okay, and when exactly? Of course, you will be updated here on Autogefühl. Thank you so much Thank you. for the insight. Thank you.